Yeah, dear participants, welcome to the course on supply chain digitization. This is jointly being taught by Professor Priyanka Burma, Professor Sushmita Narayan and Professor Devabrata Das from Indian Institute of Management, Mumbai. So, this is lecture 7 of module 3 that is analytics in supply chain management. So, before we proceed uh, for the lecture, so we will see the summary of last lecture of this module, uh, why demand planning is important. So, in the last, last lecture we discussed in detail why demand planning is important. Then we also discussed the role of AIML in demand forecasting, specifically in today's context why uh, for demand forecasting we need uh, the AI and ML algorithm. Then we also discussed like what are the various AI ML models are used typically for uh, demand forecasting. So, that is what we discuss in the last lecture. So, in today's uh, lecture we will see a case study and discuss like how AI ML model can be used. In this case specifically we will use one of the AI ML model and then we will see the result. So, the case goes as follows, the demand planning head of a large FMCG company is not happy with the last few quarters forecast. He has been observing a reasonable gap between the actual demand and the demand forecasted by his team. So, as discussed in the last uh, lecture, if there is a gap between actual demand and the demand forecasted by his team, then what will happen? Sometimes you will end up with inventory if the actual demand is uh, less than the predicted demand or you will have a like shortfall. So, if the actual demand is more than the demand you predicted then the customers will not be happy they will not get the desired product. So, they might go to the competitors. So, either you will have like excess inventory at, at hand or you will end up losing customers. So, that is the result of uh, wrong forecast or if the actual demand is not uh, all same to the forecasted demand. So, now with that background, so the manager recently organized a hands on training program on demand forecasting using AIML for his team. So, he got some idea that in today's context we need to use AI ML algorithm for demand forecasting where customers behaviors are changing, demand patterns are changing very fast. So, therefore, he uh, understood the need of using AI ML for uh, demand forecasting. So, after this training he got some idea uh, that AI ML could be used in like his case as well. So, he is wondering if his team can develop a better demand forecasting model so that accuracy improves and the gap between actual demand and forecasted demand reduces. So, that is the final aim of any demand planner that if I can reduce the gap between actual demand and forecasted demand. If I can then I am a successful manager because I would be able to uh, plan properly and my inventory holding cost will reduce at the same time my customers also will be happy because they will get the product they want. So, now he immediately asked his team to gather all the relevant data and after debate and discussion with his um, team he found out uh, the relevant uh, parameters to forecast the demand. So, in this specific FMCG company, so across the country they have many retailers okay. and they, these are big retailers, they place orders to this FMCG company and based on that order uh, they try to fulfill their demand. 
So, retailers are located in various regions, some are located in south, some are located in east, some west, some north. Uh, so, region wise retailer details we have to capture. Then there is an important parameter balanced credit amount. So, that means how much uh, balance credit amount is with them. So, this is measured in INR Indian rupees in lakh. Then location. So, although we are capturing region, uh, but within region location is also important whether they are urban, uh, the retailer is located in the urban area, whether the retailer is located in semi urban area, whether the retail is, retailer is located in rural area and so on. Then we have age that means how old the retailer is. If the retailer is very old, they will have good influence with the customers, customers will know that retailer and they will come and buy the products. Then size of the retail store, this is measured in 1000 square feet. So, if the size is bigger, more footfall will be there and we are expecting that more demand will come from that specific retailer. Then promotional offer that plays a huge role uh, specifically for FMCG industry. If you give some promotional offer that is buy one get one free, of course your demand will go up. If you give some discount on a particular product, uh, it let us say price discount you are giving, then obviously demand will go up. The number of holidays also plays an important role. If in that particular week along with the Saturday Sunday, if you have one more holiday, then obviously customers will go out and buy the product. So, demand might increase during that time period. And the last uh, parameter is order quantity. So, from the past data, I have uh, from each retailer how much order has come uh, based on the past data, I need to find out what would be the order from that particular retailer. So, for each retailer, uh, this team of demand planning team is planning to capture retailers region, a retailers balance credit amount uh, that will be capturing whether they are paying on time or not. That means, how much money they are uh, they owe to the specific FMCG company, location, its age, the size of the retail store promotional offer number of days. So, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, for each retailer I have 7 independent variable and 1 dependent variable is order quantity. So, I need to find out, I need to predict for a specific retailer how much order they will be placing to us. If I can predict it properly, then I can uh, actually produce them accordingly. So, my production plan will be good and of course, my customers will be happy because whatever quantity they are asking, I will be able to give it to them. So, therefore, with these 7 independent variables, uh, my job is to predict the order quantity. Okay. So, with this uh, 7 independent variables and 1 dependent variable, uh, he uh, and his team collected the data. So, if you look into this data, we have 1000 retailer. So, retailer starting with number starting with 0. So, I have 999 that means uh, 1000 retailers data I have and for each retailer we have their region which region they are from either they are from south or east or west or north. So, I have 4 category of region then for each retailer I have the information balanced credit amount. That means, how much money they owe to the FMCG company, how much money they are yet to pay back to the FMCG company. This is in lakh. Then we have location, either it is urban, semi urban and or rural. Then we have age in years, like how long this retailer are existed, like for how many years they are running the retail shop size in 1000 square feet, then we have promotional offer 10 if the offer was given uh, during that week 1 otherwise 0 and number of holidays in that week. 
So, for example, if you see retailer number 1, it is located in east region, the balanced credit amount is 12 lakh, located in R1 area, then 6 years old, the size of his that particular retail store is 2000 square feet and the promotional offer was not given that week and number of holiday during that week was only 1. Okay. Similarly, if I see 999 retailer number that is actually 1000 uh, retailer, the retailer number 1000 in our case, region is east, balance credit amount is 24 lakh, located in semi urban area, 22 years old uh, retail store that means it has been running for many years. The size of the retail store is 57,000 square feet, it is a huge retail store and the promotional offer was given during that week and in that week I had 2 holidays. So, for each 1000 retailer I have all these 7 parameters and their value. Then I also have collected their order quantity. So, order quantities are like for retailer number 0, it is 40, retailer number 1 is 0. That means, retailer number 0 which is located in south region uh, placed an order of 40 unit. Retailer number 1 which is located in east region did not place an order during that week. Retailer number 2 which is located in south region having 11 lakh balance placed an order for 300 units and so on. So, I not only have the values of the 7 independent variables, I also have the value of the order quantity. Okay. Now, as a manager, my job is to predict. So, these are my past data which I have with me. So, using this past data, I want to predict or I want to forecast like what will happen in the future. So, these are all past. So, let us say I want to predict if a retailer is located in west uh, region and its balanced credit amount is 10 lakh and the area is R1 area, the age 12 years, size of the retail store is 8000 square feet and the promotional offer was given during that week and I had 3 holidays during that week. Now, I have to predict how much order I will get from that particular retailer. That means, what will be the demand for the retailer during this week having these characteristics. So, therefore, I need to develop some model uh, which will help me to predict the demand for this particular retailer. Similarly, I have retailers across the country. So, for each and every retailer, I have to predict how much order they will be placing to us. That means, what would be my demand as an FMCG company, how much demand I will get from these retailers. So, if I can predict properly and if my actual demand matches with the predicted demand, then nothing like that. My inventory holding cost will go down as you have discussed. Similarly, my loss demand cost also go down. Now, with that objective in mind, uh, the manager in this case came up with the idea of regression tree and developed the model. So, there are many AIML models, but their team decided that they will develop a uh, regression tree model. Accordingly, they started working on that and after developing the model, they got the output and the output of the prediction model is presented in the next slide. Okay. So, now we will take some time to explain this output and then once the output is explained, we will go back and try to explain like how this model has been developed. So, initially I am like presenting the output to you, but how this model has come, how this model has been developed, what is the background algorithm, all we will be explaining it after some time. So, first let us focus on their model. So, uh, this is a regression tree model they have developed 
and if I see I had initially 1000 observation. So, I am using 700 observation for training purpose that is 70 percent and rest 30 percent data which is 300 observation I am keeping it aside for uh, testing the model. Okay. So, now with this 700 observation uh, if I have to predict what is the demand of each retailer then how can I do it. So, if I see in the node 0 I have all the 700 observation and the average of this 700 and order quantity is 2 to 70. So, that means if I do not have any information if you randomly pick any retailer and ask me what would be the demand of this retailer I will say 2 to 70. So, how did I get 2 to 70 is nothing but the average of all 700 retailers order quantity that is simple y bar. So, if I just write it down over here, so this is nothing but simple y bar. Okay. So, what is y? y is nothing but order quantity. So, I have order quantity of 700 retailers, I have taken the simple average of it that is what my best prediction because I do not know any other information. Now, in the second step I am splitting node 0 in two parts using one of the independent variable that is size of the store. So, now I am giving you more information. So, if size of the store is less than equal to 30.5 thousand square feet then my demand would be 1902. If the size of the store is more than 30.5 thousand square feet then my demand is 4829. Now, if I compare node 0 versus node 1 and node 2 you will see the difference. So, in node 0 I do not have any information any random retailer you tell me the demand would be 2 to 7 0 the predicted demand would be 2 to 7 0 because I do not know any characteristic of the retailer. But as soon as you give me some information some additional information for the retailer in this case I am giving the information of the size of the store. If size of the store is more than 30.5 thousand square feet that is size of the store is large then I am predicting that demand is also high. So, they I am expecting that the retailers with more than 30.5 thousand square feet area would place an order of 4829 that is my predicted demand. If the size of the store is less specifically less than or equal to 30.5 thousand square feet then I would expect that uh, the retailer would place an order of 1902 units. So, now if I compare node 0 versus node 1 and node 2 you see node 0 my predicted value for all 700 retailers were 2 to 7 0. But as soon as you give me the information that size of the store is less than equal to 30.5 thousand square feet I am telling you no demand is predicted demand is not 2 to 7 0 it is 1902 it has been updated. Similarly, if you give me the information that the size of the store is more than 30.5 thousand square feet then I will tell that actual the predicted demand is not 2270, the predicted demand would be 4829 units. And how many observations I have? I have 612 observations which are having size less than or equal to 30.5 thousand square feet, and I have 88 observations which is 13 percent of 700 for which the size of the retail store is more than 30.5 thousand square feet. Now, the question is can I improvise this prediction? Can I get better prediction? Yes, you can get better prediction if you give me more information. So, the more information can come like this. So, now in node 1 I have the information that the size of the store is less than equal to 30.5 thousand square feet. Now, I have 612 observations 
of that category now can i split this node further okay so i can split this node further using an independent variable called promotion so promotion has two value 0 1 if promotion is 0 that means no promotional offer was given during that period if promotion equal to 1 a particular promotional offer was given to the customers and if we know a promotional offer is given to the customers the demand will go up and that is what exactly you can see in this data also now we split it node 1 using the independent variable promotion if you see promotion equal to 0 the demand predicted is 943 if promotion equal to 1 demand predicted is 2360 can you can see the demand has increased the predicted value of the demand has increased so if i am at if i am at node 1 then for all 612 observation i am predicting the demand is 1902 but as soon as you give me the information that the size is less than equal to 30.5 plus the promotional offer was given to that given by that retailer then my demand would increase to 23 Six zero, and that is how the demand and uh, the predicted demand value is improvised. So similarly, I can split the node two using another independent variable called age. Okay. Now in node two, I have eighty eight observations, and for all eighty eight observations, I am predicting that my demand is four eight two nine. So it's relatively high compared to node 1 uh, because node 2 the size of the retail store is high if size is high more footfall will come and obviously I will predict that demand also will be high. So therefore if you compare node 1 and node 2, node 2 average demand is high and that is why the predicted demand is also high. Now if I use edge and split node 2. I am using the age value 17.5. So, if a retail store is having more than 30.5 thousand square feet area and it is more than 17.5 years old, then the predicted demand is 8227. Can you see? Like the predicted demand jumped from 4829 to 8227. Why? Because the size of the store is large as well as its old store. So, many customers knows it, old means more than 17.5 years, customer knows it, they go to this retail store, buy it. So, obviously, old store having huge area, so demand is also high. So, I would expect that these kind of retailers would place a large order to me and in this case, I am predicting that demand would be 8227. Similarly, if I go to the left hand side, here in this case, I have size of the retail store is more than 30.5 thousand square foot, but like the store is relatively new, age is less than equal to 17.5 years, my predicted demand is 2887. So now, if I compare node 0, so node 0, I have 700 observation, all 700 training data I have and the predicted value is 2270. So irrespective of any characteristic, if you randomly pick any retailer and ask me what would be the demand, I would say 2270. Obviously, this demand will have lot of error because like compared to actual demand because I am not using any characteristic of that particular retailer. So, therefore, we use like smart criteria and splitted the node. So, node 0 is splitted into node 1, node 2, then node 1 is further splitted into node 3 and 4 and node 2 is further splitted into node 5 and 6. Now, this 700 observations which are at node 0 split into 4 part node 3 
which is having 198 observation that is 28 percent of the data. Node 4, 414 observation which is having 59 percent of the data. Node 5, 56 observation, 8 percent of the data. Node 6, 32 observation, 5 percent of the data. So, if you sum it up, it would be 700 observation. So, this 700 observation which are at node 0 splitted into 4 node or I can say 4 clusters node 3 1 cluster, node 4 1 cluster, node 5 1 cluster, node 6 1 cluster. So, all the retailers which are falling into node 3 for those retailers my predicted demand is 943. All the retailers which are falling into node 4 so, who are those retailers who would fall into node 4? The retailers whose size is less than equal to 30.5 thousand square feet and they are giving promotional offer during that week and the demand is 2360 that is predicted demand. Similarly, all the retailers who are into node 5, I would predict that demand is 2887. All the retailers who are into node 6, I would predict the demand is 8227. So, who are the retailers? Can you say who are the retailers who are into node 6? So, the retailers are those whose size is more than 30.5 thousand square feet and age is more than 17.5. So, now I have used three independent variable. First, size of the store, then second, promotional offer, whether promotional offer was given by the retailer or not and third age of the store, how long they are into the existence. So, using these three variable, I can predict the demand or I can predict the order quantity by the uh, retailer. If I increase the depth of the decision tree, if I further split node 3, node 4, node 5, then obviously my depth of the decision tree will increase and my prediction will be much better. Suppose this is the regression entry or the regress entry to be specific which you have built and based on this regress entry you want to predict. So, you have a retailer let us say retailer A which is located in west part of the country balanced credit balanced credit amount is 10 lakh rupees they are located in urban area the age of the retail store is 12 years old the size is 8000 square feet and the promotional offer was given during that time period. I have 3 holidays during that week. Then the question is what would be my expected demand? Like how much order this particular retailer that is retailer A would place to me? Can you predict this data or the demand based on this decision tree? Yes, I can. So, first I have to see the size of the store size of the store is 8. That means, I am here. So, I am going into node 1 because in my case retailer A size is 8000 square feet. So, node 1 is cluster of those retailers whose size is less than equal to 30.5 thousand square feet. Now, next I have to see promotion promotion was given promotion value 1. So, I will move to this part. So, I am in node 4. So, node 4 predicts the demand is 2360. So, what would be this value? So, this value will be 2360. So, my predicted demand for this retailer is 2360. So, that is how uh, for any retailer across the country using these three parameter size of the store, promotion and age, you can predict what would be the demand of those retailers. So, now if I summarize, I have four node, each like node 3, node 4, node 5, node 6. Given the data of any retailer, it will fall either in node 3 or node 4 or node 5 or node 6 and based on that I can predict. So, if I just summarize I can create a business rules out of it. The first business rule would be 
the size of the store less than equal to 30.5000 square feet, promotion is 0, demand is 943. So, that is what we have written, size of the store less than 30.5000 square feet, promotion is 0, predicted value is 943. Matching. Now, next size of the store less than equal to 30.5000 square feet, promotion was given for those kind of retailer demand is 2360. Size of the store less than 30.5000 square feet, promotion was given, demand is 2360. The next size of the store more than 30.5000 square feet, age less than equal to 17.5 years, demand is 2887 demand is 2887 with this characteristic. Now, we have last uh, criteria size more than 30.5000 square feet, age more than 17.5 and then demand is 8227, 8227 and I have this particular characteristics. So, I have 4 value of the predicted demand. Uh, depending upon the size of the retail store and the promotional offer and the age of the retail store, I can predict the demand of each of this retailer and then I have the support uh, for that prediction also which we discussed in classification entry. So, for first uh, predicted demand 943, I have the support of 28 percent. So, how do you decide support? Support means how much observation you have. So, in node 4, I have 28 percent observation. In node 3, I have 28 percent observation. In node 4, I have 59 percent. Node 5, 8 percent. Node 6, 5 percent. So, that is what my support are. If support is high, if support is high, specifically for these two nodes, node 3 and 4, in my prediction, I will have more accuracy. That is what this support says. Okay. So, in the next class, we will see how you can also build, uh, build the similar kind of decision tree on your own. So, thank you. See you in the next uh, lecture.